Hi, this is Dr. Derek Keats from Kinga Solutions. And I'm a complete nutter when it comes to the use of the Creative Commons uh, non-commercial attribution. And I'd like to explain why I am. So I've put together this little uh, tutorial, which is called Professor Derek and the Non-Commercial Restriction on Freedom in Educational Content. This goes back to 2006, a workshop that I gave at the eLearning Africa conference in Addis Ababa, Ethiopia. And although it's 2006, six years ago, it still is extremely important in the world of open educational resources today. And it's important that we get this right, because if we don't get it right, we're creating a legacy for future generations that, are, that is going to be problematic. We don't notice it so much now, but we will notice it much more in the future. So, let's go through this uh, presentation, and it's a, it's like a, done like a cartoon, uh, with the baldy man from Creative Commons, and the baldy man is me because I'm a baldy man. Uh, Professor Derek lives in South Africa, and he believes that educational content should be free, and that users should be free to copy, adapt, and distribute it. Free as in freedom. He feels that a restriction requiring the changes to be made available under the same terms will protect that freedom. I just discovered this amazing site that allows me to find content that has a Creative Commons license. Wow! Professor Derrick is excited about Creative Commons licenses and he's glad that so many people share his view of a world where educational content is shared freely, where people are free to build on each other's work. He starts to build his online biology course, building on the things that he has made available under open content licenses for many years, since the uh, mid-1990s. Professor Derrick goes online to do some searching for free content that he can use. He's looking for some material on marine algae. I'll search for marine algae. Professor Derrick is saddened and surprised by what he finds. There are lots of sites with Creative Commons licenses, but most of them use a non-commercial restriction that is not compatible with the more free attribution share-alike license that he prefers. Info, info everywhere and not a drop to use. It's not that Professor Derrick wants to make money out of his content. He wouldn't mind, of course, but he knows that he won't. It's just that he doesn't want to restrict what people can do with his content. The non-commercial restriction is not compatible with his philosophy. I just want educational resources to be free. Free as used here means free as in freedom, not in the absence of price. Free as in speech, not free as in beer. It's clear that the nuances of license choice are not well understood in the educational and scientific community. What can I do to change things? Professor Derrick decides to put together a small lecture that he can use at conferences to try to promote the concept of freedom for educational content. I'll have to use the conferences that I attend to try to change things. Free content is content that contributes to social good by recognizing four freedoms and one restriction that safeguards and promotes those freedoms. With free content, everyone has certain rights. The right to copy, distribute, display, perform the work without requiring permission further than that which is guaranteed by this freedom. And this freedom is without limitation. It's not determined by who you are or what you're doing. So the right to exercise this freedom is given for any purpose under any circumstances and that includes commercial use. And there's a good reason for including commercial use in freedom too. Thinking about free and open source software, what would have happened if we didn't allow commercial use of open source software? We wouldn't have it. There'd be none. The big companies that have com contributed to free and open source software has made a tremendous positive impact. Excluding them from contributing to education con uh, content is just plain lunacy. We also have the right to make derivative works, and again, this right is given without limitation, and anyone can make those derivative works, irrespective of what your purpose is, whether you're going to use it for good, or whether you're going to use the derivative works to hit somebody over the head, you still have the same rights. 
You have the right to copy, distribute, display, and perform the derivative works that you create. Again, irrespective of what the reason is that you're doing it. One restriction can be used, although it doesn't have to be, to ensure that the first four freedoms are passed on in derivative works, and also to prevent the pure and raw commercial exploitation that seems to be the reason why people generally choose the non-commercial restriction. This is the share alike clause. If the work is altered, transformed, or built upon in any way, resulting work may only be distributed under an identical license that includes this restriction. This is the copy left restriction. So in other words, if I make my work <clears throat> available under an attribution, share alike license, if I make my work available under one of these free licenses, the share alike clause ensures that anybody, a commercial company or, or anyone else who takes that and uses it and, and builds upon it must make what they build available also under a copy lift. And you don't need non-commercial restriction to prevent people from stealing your work and selling it. It's just utterly and totally unnecessary. Without this share alike restriction, the four freedoms are not pr protected in derivative works. An optional further restriction is permissible with free content in that it may require that the original author be given credit or attribution. The original author or producer of the content, as well as the author or producers of derivative works, must be acknowledged and given credit for their contribution. This is the attribution restriction. And attribution and share alike combined together. The emphasis in the philosoph philosophy of free content is on social good through promoting collaborative development and the adaptation and expansion of content, irrespective of whether it's by people who are doing it for 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 reasons of pure uh, desire to contribute to education or content, or whether they're doing it because they're a commercial enterprise and they want to. Um, uh, um, create opportunities that within the education space. Either way, education benefits. We can think of free courseware, as another term, as free content that is arranged in courses and made available in a structured manager, manner via the internet. We can also imagine situations where content includes some, but not all of these freedoms, and where there may be additional restrictions imposed. We can call this open content. Open content may restrict the conditions under which the content may be used. For example, it may impose non-commercial restriction or not allow the production of derivative works. Such restrictions are mostly made, however, out of ignorance. And this is particularly true with the non-commercial restriction. The emphasis in philosophy of open content is access to content while protecting the author's wishes to restrict access to certain people and certain sets of circumstances. This is not free as in liberty. All free content is open content, but all open content is not free content. <coughs> we can think of open courseware, such as the MIT open courseware, as open content that is arranged in courses and made available in some kind of structured manner via the internet. All free courseware is open courseware, but not all open courseware is free courseware. MIT has open courseware, but it's not free. It's not free courseware. Today, people often talk about education, open educational resources, or OER, and UNESCO has just had their uh, 10th anniversary of the coining of the term open educational resources, celebrated with the, with the uh, Open Educational Resources Congress that was held in Paris. OERs cover both content that is not organized into courses as well as content that is, in fact, organized into courses or courseware. Now, the problem with just talking about open is that the vitally important concept of freedom is lost. For this reason, I prefer to talk about free and open educational resources, or four. In the concept of free and open educational resources, freedom is placed in the foreground. This concept is not widely used or accepted, although hopefully one day the importance of the four freedoms will be widely recognized. They certainly not recognized in most OER today. Professor Derek meets fellow biologist Dr. Claudia at a conference. Dr. Claudia has a non-commercial restriction on her course materials. Claudia, can you please explain to me why you use a non-commercial restriction on your Creative Commons licensed educational content? 
I just want to understand your choice of license. Or why should somebody let why should I let somebody make money out of my work, she says. Isn't it a bit obvious? Dr. Claudia presents a fairly standard reply. Professor Derrick has heard this response before. Professor Derrick knows he has his work cut out for him. It's always a big job to explain the long term consequences of licenses. It shouldn't be about commercial use, Claudia, he says. It's about promoting freedom. May I explain what I mean? Sure, says Claudia. Explain away. But I don't think that you will make me change my mind. Besides, this is my institution's policy anyway, says Claudia. Dr. Claudia is willing to listen to the skeptic's ear. Professor Derrick begins the long talk to freedom. Okay, let me get out my laptop and show you a presentation I made about Creative Commons licenses and freedom. We can think of traditional copyright as a license within which the holder reserves all rights. We can think of the public domain as being a license within which the holder reserves no rights at all. Of course, copyright and public domain are not really licenses, per se. In between full copyright and the public domain, there is a spectrum of rights that you may decide to keep or relinquish. This is the area of some rights reserved. It is the area where Creative Commons licenses operate. These licenses allow you to choose which rights to retain and which to give up in this in-between area. These rights are defined and indicated by symbols and can be combined in different ways to create different kinds of licenses. There are really only four of them that we need to know about for now. Let's call them conditions. The first condition is share alike. You allow others to distribute derivative works only under an identical license to the license that governs your work. This is share alike, as I said. You let others copy and distribute your work under no derivatives, but you don't allow them to create derivative works. They can only distribute, display, and perform verbatim copies. This is the ND or no derivatives. If you add a non-commercial restriction, then you let others copy, display, and perform your work or derivative, create derivative works based on it, but only for non-commercial purposes. One of the difficulties here, of course, is it's extremely difficult to know what non-commercial versus commercial means. Right now, for example, I am a commercial entity and I'm producing this video under a attribution license. If I added a non-commercial clause, I wouldn't even be allowed to use it myself, I think. But I don't know. Nobody knows. You let others copy, distribute, and perform only verbatim copies of, uh, sorry, uh, perform uh, your work, but they must give you attribution. But they, the, the future generations, the text here on this one is wrong, so ignore it. Um, but uh, you, you requ they're required to give you attribution, in other words, to say where it came from. But if you just use attribution without uh, a share alike, then it, it can be, it can pass, your work can pass into any of the other license type content. So it's, it's in a way, it's the most flexible of all the licenses if it's only attribution. So by combining these conditions in different ways, Creative Commons has created a set of six different licenses. Remember our definition of free content and the four freedoms. Well, there are two licenses that are compatible with this definition. None of the licenses to the left of the gap contain all of the four freedoms that define free content. Both of the licenses to the right of the gap contain all of the four freedoms that define free content. There is thus a compatibility gap between the non-free licenses to the, to the left and the free licenses to the right. This means that content licensed under non-free licenses can't be mixed with content licensed under free licenses. Recall that we can include a copyleft clause to protect the four freedoms, even in derivative works. This is the Creative Commons Attribution Share-alike license, which has these general protections. The Creative Commons Attribution license also has the four freedoms, but it lacks the ge generational protection of copyleft. The non-commercial and no derivative works conditions are the cause of this incompatibility. They should only be used for very good reasons. 
most people don't use them for good reasons. They use them for the wrong reasons. They use them for reasons that are perfectly compatible with the attribution share alike protected by the uh, uh, protected uh, where attribution is protected by the share alike uh, copy left clause. You don't need an NC restriction if you use that license. Professor Derrick knows that he's still only part way down the road. He still needs to explain why freedom, as he has defined it, is so important for educational resources. Okay, Claudia, so I've talked about the licenses, but I've still not explained why freedom matters. So let me have a go at it before you give up altogether. Is that okay? Dr. Claudia, ever a good scientist, remains skeptical. She doesn't see why this notion of freedom matters. It's not the way people usually think of freedom, and she thinks that he's just being a nutty professor. Well, so why should I care about what you call freedom, says Claudia. It's way too abstract for me. Who really cares? Professor Derrick knows that this is the most difficult part of the story to tell. He has to be careful, as it is easy to fall down on this road. Can we agree that we want to see the availability of resources for education increase and that we want to see people collaborating to create and use them? And by the way, when I say collaborate, I don't mean only collaborate. Dr. Claudia can't argue with the idea that there should be growing wealth of educational resources and that are created and shared collaboratively and individually. Sure, she says. I can agree with that. How could anyone argue otherwise? Professor Derrick wonders if Dr. Claudia has thought about the barriers to creating an abundance of educational resources. Then would you agree that the fewer barriers there are in the way of that happening, the better? Dr. Claudia gets the concept of barriers immediately. It fits in with her experiences of creating content for her own courses. I remember once wanting to scan several pictures from a magazine article to use on a website for my class. It took me a couple of months to get permission. Is that what you mean by a barrier? Professor Derrick is grateful that Dr. Claudia has experienced some of the barriers he's talking about. Yes, that is exactly the kind of barrier I'm talking about. There are others as well, but I think you get my point. However, Claudia is still not convinced. She doesn't quite get the role of the license. You're trying to convince me to lose a non-commercial restriction on my marine botany course, but how is that a barrier? I mean, anyone can use it as long as they don't try to make money, no? Professor Derrick wonders if everyone believes that their work is so good that people will take it to make money. How can he make Dr. Claudia understand that free licenses protect her rights? <sighs> It's a barrier because the content with the non-commercial restriction can't be mixed with content that doesn't have this restriction. In other words, it can't be mixed with free content. However, Dr. Claudia is still not convinced. She still doesn't get the role of the license. But then surely the barrier is with what you call the free content licenses. If they would all change to the NC restriction, there wouldn't be any barrier. Professor Derrick thinks back to the days of apartheid in South Africa. He wonders if Dr. Claudia would have argued that the problem was not with apartheid, but with the fact that people found it unacceptable. Uh, I guess one could say that if you one could say that if you are not interested in freedom, but it's a bit like arguing that the problem with dictatorship is that people want democracy. If they accepted dictatorship, it would be okay. That's a bit of an extreme analogy, but you get my point. Dr. Claudia starts to wonder why this particular concept of freedom is so important and why Professor Derrick takes this rather extreme perspective. You don't seem like an extremist to me, so why does it matter? Why is it that you re what you refer to as freedom is so important? After all, it's not like people will lose their lives over it, says Claudia. Professor Derrick thinks that perhaps the best way to explain it to Claudia is by getting her to think further about barriers and to active participation in building knowledge through building communities. You have already agreed, Claudia, that in order to get lots and lots of educational content and to get lots of people using it, improving it, and reusing it for their own purpose, it would be good if there were as few barriers as possible to that happening. Dr. Claudia thinks about this and finds that it is a statement that she can agree with as it fits her experience. It would be hard to argue with that, she says. After all, the more resources there are, the more ways they are used and modified, the better for me and my students. Professor Derrick believes he's getting somewhere. Well, whenever you place a restriction, then 
there is a barrier that has to be overcome. For people who believe in the concepts of freedom, as I explained them, the NC restriction is a barrier to them building on the content and improving it, and particularly in the long term. But Dr. Claudia is still skeptical. Well, you could just get their permission. It's clear that Professor Derek still has a ways to go to convince Dr. Claudia. Hmm. Okay, that would be true if there was just one person wanting to use something from another person. But as the number of people and resources increase, the complexity of maintaining such permissions adds significant overhead and becomes itself a barrier. And that is, in fact, colleagues, the barrier that the Creative Commons licensing scheme tries to overcome but seems to only exacerbate when the non-commercial restriction is used. Dr. Claudia accepts that perspective, but comes back to the why should people make money out of my work? Emotional argument. This is the emotional argument that seems to drive most people. Okay, says Claudia, I can see that point, but I still don't see why I should allow people to make money from my work. Professor Derrick is beginning to think that he should take up another cause. Perhaps the International Protect Society for the Protection of Large Round Rocks or something like that. But Claudia, it's not really about people making money out of your work. It's about lowering the barriers to collaboration and improving your work. This will surely come back to benefit you in some way. Dr. Claudia still wants to prevent people from packing her work, claiming it as their own, and selling it. Look, I spent weeks on those animations of algal reproductions. I don't want someone to, to just package them and sell them as part of a book or a CD, and then I get nothing. Professor Derrick thinks that at last he can begin to make Dr. Claudia understand. He pulls out his laptop and shows a part of the presentation that he made at another conference. Claudia, let me show you something else on my laptop. I made this for another conference. Maybe it will help to convince you. Freedom is protected and insured with an attribution share alike license because any derivative works must also be shared and must further require that the subsequent derivative works also require the same conditions. Nobody can derive work and not give it back. <clears throat> this protection is the reason for the copyleft or share alike in this case clause in the license. Now the copyleft provision protects your content the, there are a couple of myths here that we need to bust. Someone can change it and sell it and I get nothing. This is wrong. Copyleft means that anyone who changes it must give the changes back under the same license. Even if they mix their content with yours, their content must also then share your license. And this is, of course, the reason for the incompatibility of licenses. Then someone can edit it and change the meaning and at attribute new meaning to me. Well, this is wrong because generally attribution also requires that changes be made known or that they be obvious and in most cases the deriv derivation is in fact pretty obvious and in any case there's nothing to stop people from misquoting you under under normal circumstances of copyright so this doesn't really hold any water at all professor Derek is hopeful that he's made a convincing case so you see, Claudia, your rights are protected from pure commercial exploitation. If a CD-ROM pu publisher did what you suggested, they would have to make the CD available under the same license. At last, Dr. Claudia understands that there could actually be benefits from commercial use, as long as the conditions of the license are respected. I see, I see, says Claudia. So if someone extended my work to create something for a commercial purpose, I could benefit but it would require an enlightened publisher. Professor Derek thinks that Claudia is becoming an enlightened educator. Yes, you are absolutely right, but right now there are not many of them. The business models for free content are only just beginning to emerge. Free content is, a, is way behind free software in this regard, but enlightened educators can start the ball rolling. And while I'm on the subject, it's not only about commercial about people making money out of out of commercial changes to your content. It may well be that a commercial entity, such as my own, simply wants to produce educational content and make it available under free license. 
doesn't necessarily mean that if we use your content and improve upon it, we're going to make money out of your content. We may make money out of other things that keeps us, us going, but we don't necessarily make money out of selling your content. The jury is out on the on the on what the actual commercial non-commercial restrictions means. However, that's a big problem. But Dr. Claudia raises another concern that she has. This one has to do with resistance among other educators to getting rid of the NC restriction. Um, there, you mention barriers, but there's another barrier. I work for the awesome. Technology and Research Institute, Atari, and at Atari, our professors would never give away their content without an NC restriction, she says. So if Atari didn't use the NC restriction, we wouldn't have any content at all. So we all use the NC restriction because it's our policy in order to get their buy-in. Professor Derrick is not surprised. He's heard this argument before from other professors at Atari. He has a counter-argument ready. So you're saying it is okay to be less free when people don't understand the benefits of freedom. Dr. Claudia is still not subscribing to the concept of freedom Professor Derek uses. Well, not quite, but in the limited sense that you define pre freedom, I guess, yes, she says. The barrier here is not the license, but people's knowledge of what is at stake. Then ask yourself, what is the real barrier here, Claudia? Is it the license or is it people's knowledge and attitude? Dr. Claudia experiences an aha moment. Aha, I see, she says. If the barrier is the license, then you address it one way, but if the barrier is knowledge and attitude, then you address it another way. Professor Derrick experiences an overwhelming sense of relief, exactly. Dr. Claudia now takes on the role of the person giving the explanation. So we should be trying to educate our staff at Atari instead of just accepting the buildup of a massive non-free content. Dr. Claudia has another revelation. Actually, we're creating an unnecessary polarization within the free and open content world. Professor Derrick ex experiences an overwhelming sense of relief. That is exactly right, Claudia. You see, Atari's reputation and brand create followers who also do not realize the value of freedom. Few institutions in the world beside Atari could produce this effect. Dr. Claudia begins to see a mission for herself at Atari. I think that I will go back after this conference and see if I can get an education and marketing campaign going to help our staff make the right choices and to see if we can change our policy. Professor Derrick thinks that Dr. Claudia can get it so can others. After all, if they work at the Atari, they can't be incapable of learning new ideas and changing their mindsets. That would be excellent, he says. Don't get me wrong, Atari has made a great start and it has raised global awareness of four, or or, and that is a valuable contribution. Now maybe it's time to go the whole distance before there is real damage done. Claudia has another idea. Maybe I can also speak to one of our funders, the Sweet Sweet Sugar Foundation. Maybe they can also help put pressure on us to change. Hopefully I won't get fired. Professor Derrick thinks he can now tell Claudia to have a look at his course materials. They are teaching almost the same program. Maybe if she would be willing to lose the NC restriction, they could start their own little community. By the way, Claudia, I've had my algae course under a free license since 1998. Maybe we can work together on improving our content together. Claudia becomes enthusiastic. Great idea. Let's see who else is here at this conference that might be interested as well. And so the conversation ends. A small victory for freedom. Unfortunately, most OERs today are not freely shared. Freedom has yet to see it's victory. Thank you for now and bye. And sorry for this being so long.